we've got Etta James at last playing through, which what a perfect song. It's cliche and it's delightful. Mm-hmm. Um, and they pull her up to the exact same hotel that they posted up Fred and Serena in. Did you two notice that? It looked like it. I feel I feel like it was the exact same hotel that Fred and Serena stayed in when they were visiting in season two. Oh, yeah, you're right. I just thought you meant like their jail. I'm like, I no, no not idea the jail. They are. And smart power. <laughs> the exact same hotel. That makes sense because that's all my notes saying how much it feels like that. But I didn't realize that it was the exact same hotel. That's awesome. Yeah, oh, that's the, cool. like I I noticed it when they saw, like showed the facade of the uh, the five or the six flags because there's five flags and then the one um, Canadian at the top. Yep. As soon as they showed, it was the exact same shot from the exact same angle. And I was like, motherfuckers. I was like, this is like, this is their most secure location. And yeah. they so much to say it. Um, I think you can hear them saying like, this is where we keep all of our high profile refugees um, from Gilead, which was compelling to me because like, if this is where they keep their high profile refugees... This is also where they were keeping Serena and Fred. Yeah. <laughs> were they considering that Serena and Fred might declare themselves refugees of Gilead? And that's why they housed them in that hotel briefly. I think what it would be is probably a security thing um, where they already have enough security involved with the hotel where they can put people of importance who would otherwise be at danger in a safe spot. So whether it's uh, Serena or it's June, they both could be at risk and putting them here, I guess I would assume is probably easier if they already have it mapped out with the, how to keep it secure. Mm. That stands to reason. That makes a lot of sense. It is interesting though. I'm wondering if when Fred and Serena were last in Canada, you know, back in season two, I'm just going to hope that there weren't any refugees staying in the hotel at that time. Cause could you fucking imagine like, what do you do? Be like, okay, the Waterfords have to go on this yeah. floor and we have to put these people on this right. floor. And no, that wouldn't work. They would have to be putting them somewhere else. So I'm thinking at that point, maybe they just didn't have refugees of that high status. Yeah. That's my guess is exactly that. How many refugees do have high profile status besides June Osborne? Yeah. All right. It's a very good point. Nice hotel. Um, it's very bougie, and that's going to be her home for the next few days. I bet Oprah is there, and that's where she bro broadcasts Radio Free. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it is. It's secure. <laughs> I like right? that thought. But she's oh, so funny. different and damaged compared to the people she is walking by. Like She sticks out like a sore thumb. And, God, the elevator scene is just grim. Well, Yeah. So grim. Before that, though, like, even as she's walking through, like, I definitely was thinking she sticks out the same way Serena did when she showed up in Canada, not realizing that it was exactly the same hotel. Um, but then it also really, really gave me gross vibes of Jezebel's. More so than the yeah. Serena trip. That's what really the just the way it was shot, like mm. the shots of the women seemed as foreign to June in that moment, because she's been away for seven years, as it felt to see everyone dressed up in Jezebel's, it was that same creepy, like, it just felt gross and off. But a lot of the grossness, I think, came from the fact that it was so, there was so much opulence and grandeur involved with this setting that it's, it's just gross when you know what she's just experienced and what everyone that she knows and cares about that's still in Gilead is still experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis and what she's gone through just to get onto Canadian soil. And then they parade her through this like place. It's just dripping in and Gilead as elsewhere. The flowers, the platters, it's all just so much. It's like DC Jezebel's, all of it. It's just yes. gross. Yes, I picked up on that as well. Um, there was when she was walk or when they were walking her through the um, uh, through the lobby as well. Um, there was one point that they showed a piano player, and like the the uh, the pianist was playing like what sounded like a weird like minor key version of At Last, um, but it was also it was done in this sort of jilted 
honky tonk style. And all I could think was like, this is a, like this is how At Last would be played if it was being played at like a Wild West saloon. Yeah, which, t- which totally plays into that Jezebel's vibe. Yeah, like, yeah, that, I could see that. Oh, that's at, funny. Wow. And that, that for me was that first like everything felt a little bit off, but like hearing that piano play that uh, in that minor key was for me that like that blaring klaxon of discord as much as one could have in uh, in Canada. Oh, Discord. It's always there. Always. Waiting I know. I feel like we haven't gotten as much Discord in this season, so I'm I enjoying know. bringing I it back. Bringing back the Discord. Oh, it'll be there, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure. The Discord, to me, always felt like June's mental health issues coming to light, coming yes. into our ears, and so I'm, I'm sure we'll get more of it. But that box scene... Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, because I actually interrupted Scarlett with uh, with that talk of honky-tonk jilted piano. Go for it, Scarlett. Oh, no, I'm good. I was just going to talk about the elevator. Everybody yeah, looks go, so fucking grim, Yeah, the elevator, because that's where I was going to oh, okay. go. Um, yeah, so everybody in that elevator just looks so grim. Remember when we saw that in the trailer and we were like, what is happening? No one looks happy in this elevator. Like, no one looks happy in this fucking elevator. Even if they are slightly smiling, like I think Miss Tapping might have been like somewhat smiling. Mm. I mean, I'm sure it's a great day for her because I I think that as an ex a person external to the situation, I think that she is as happy as anybody could possibly be for the situation that just happened because she's been holding Luke and Moira's hands through this process the best she could for years now. It's just been so long, but no one else looks happy. And that's a really good point because, like, this is like Rachel finally gets an opportunity to get Luke and Moira off her back, <laughs> like just a little bit. <laughs> I know. So she's probably tickled. Here. She's like, I told you the yeah, green daughter. persimmon worked. <laughs> you scoffed at me, damn it. She's like, I'm gonna tell every refugee this, <laughs> right? <Yes. laughs> I can't figure it out. But everyone else is dealing with, like, the ramifications of this incredibly joyous moment that June is safe and June is, like, June is okay. But also the ramifications of this crazy event that June is safe and June's okay and June's in Canada. And now you have to deal with, like, the psychological and political fallout that's the maelstrom that is incoming. Yeah. And that we haven't, it's like the maelstrom hasn't even happened yet. Right now, we just have like that discord and this incredible sense of like, holy shit, this is surreal. And we're, I feel like we really were perceiving things through her eyes. Like, especially when we get up to the room, you know, there's flowers and there's this great cheese and booze spread. Oh my God. I would just, my face right into that. It'd be amazing. And June's not even paying attention to any of this. Like, it's, Just vague echoes to her, her importance as a witness, blah, blah, blah. She's like hearing none of it. This is still shocking to her. Yeah, side note, first of all, I couldn't hear everything as well as I wanted to uh, that they were saying in the background. And I definitely heard the mental health counselor part. And I'm still wondering at what point she's going to get access to that because it didn't seem like this happened in that episode, that that happened in this episode. (laughs) My guess is that it would have happened if they had kept her there for a few days for her debriefing. I was thinking that too on my rewatch. I'm like, shit, is it because she left? I think it's I think it's because she left. I think it's because uh, and I think that that's why as much as I appreciate that Luke was kind of like stepping up and being like this is what June wants, so we're going to give what June what she wants. Um I think that it was short-sighted in that regard because like I think like Twello should have it like my guess is that like that's when she would have gotten that mental health counselor gotten hooked up with that doctor and like been able to kind of evaluate where she was is yeah. in that debriefing process mm-hmm. mm. yeah my gut was that they wouldn't they didn't want to get her the counseling until the debriefing get all the information untainted from her first and then give her the mental health counselor. And that's what I was wondering when I was rewatching it just before we got on here. I was just listening to it while I got ready. And I was like, I wonder if it's because he left with her. But then I still feel like 
I don't know. There was enough time passed in this episode that at some point someone needs to get this woman some mental health counseling if she's going to be out walking in grocery stores and caring for her child. Like she's they, she's pretty much been released and she's talking to Twella whenever she seems to feel like it at this point. I don't know what the status of the debrief is entirely, but we didn't see any mental health counselors. And I think that needs to happen ASAP, obviously. But I did want to hear more of the information. They got her a debit card. They got her. They procured some clothes. That was my thing. I mean, I get it. They just got off a boat. She's a refugee. They're just trying to get her to safety. But I'm like, my God, you're parading her through this place. And she looks like a refugee. You know, we didn't get to see that aspect of like the mental health check with Emily or Moira, too. I know. I mean, as far as we know, Moira, like we don't even know what happened to her. She was so early that like... That must have been in its infancy. Then Emily comes along and we know that she's got this general doctor's appointment like, hey, we're going to, you know, take a look at your situation and, you know, hey, your cholesterol is high. Um, But we don't really hear about the what is being done to help these people cope and reacclimate to life yet. They're not doing anything to cope and reacclimate because Moira, like the closest hint to that that we get is when Moira looks around after uh, after Twello and Rachel, uh, Rachel leave and they're like, oh, we'll get a doctor and mental health counselor. You're important as a witness. Order room service. Yada, like all those little whispers. Moira is there and she's uh, she's looking around saying this is a lot nicer than the refugee intake center. Which right there, that's the one sentence that you need to tell us everything we need to know. There's no way that Moira and like uh, and Emily and Luke and like any of these uh, any of the other players are getting the mental health services that they need. They're probably being intaken. If I had to like, if I had to take a stab in the dark, they're probably being intaken into the normal Cana- uh, Canadian healthcare system, um, and kind of just having to wait their turn in the sort of in a sort of like. An uh, NH and an N and wow in an NHS system that was a tricky one from my tongue to wrap around wow huh yeah um in an NHS system and so that's like to, that to me reads that like they're gonna hand they're going to absolutely hand deliver these services to June but when Moira says this is so much nicer than the refugee intake center. Yeah. No one else has access I'm, to this. I, I'm sure they're getting, it, like you said, at least regular mental health access that every other Canadian's getting. We did see that part of uh, the refugee intake. I thought it was more like telling that Moira's line at that point was more of the fact that, okay, June's been propped up in the hotel and probably has security and all the, other, you know what I mean? We saw her get delivered in an I van, no less. I forgot to mention that. Um, but, you know, uh, but as far as the mental health, I'm wondering why, like, so we see a refugee intake center, like a regular one that most people would go to. And, I would just think within those facilities, they must have like group counseling, if nothing else. Like these people need to be talking to each other because no one else knows what it was like other than these other refugees coming out. And we get to see through June and through everyone we know in Canada that, yes, they have their own little network. But what about all these other refugees? Like they need to kind of be facilitating something, I would assume. I'm just assuming we're not seeing it and that it's happening because I just can't imagine that these people aren't getting any kind of mental health care. They better be. Yeah. Yeah. One would hope that they are getting getting it, but I just don't think that it's being like hand delivered and procured the same way uh, as it is for June at this point. For sure, yeah. And I'm not really sure why people aren't more insistent that June gets to see somebody at least by the next morning when she's having pancakes. Like, no, no grocery store therapy now. Like, I don't know what's happening here, but we'll get to it. Yeah, like a medical check. Like, where is her, yeah. her medical intake to? Yeah, uh, right. She's got I, a I gunshot mean... wound among recent torture. Yeah, she's she's a mess. I, and I'm sure she's, she's got to be malnourished. In she's some got way. a TBI. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and like we even see that she's complete. Like so, after Moira leaves Luke and June alone, and Luke's like, "So, what do you want to do? You want her room service?" Like he's trying to be so chill and like so amenable to her, and she's completely shell shocked at this point. Like she just walks. She like nods when she or when he says a shower or like use the bathroom. Yeah, use the bathroom. She's like, oh, ba- bathroom, yeah, yeah. She walks right past him, doesn't acknowledge him. Like, you see the look on his face it, when she, like, when she turns that corner. You know it was a cold reception that, like, she didn't even acknowledge him. So, like, 
there's of course going to be issues there that she needs to see a mental health professional right now but she also like she needs to see a physical doctor because when she's in the shower we see all of these like very fresh deep bruises 